Let us pray. Most remarkable God, your love is astounding. As we gather at the foot of the cross tonight, give us a renewed trust and love. Teach us that the darkest human hour is the brightest divine moment, that where human disgrace sinks to its lowest, divine glory reaches its peak. Teach us again that there is no limit to your love, no exclusion zone to your salvation, through Jesus Christ, your Holy Son. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of corn falls to the ground and dies, it remains but a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, and anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servants will also be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven came, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that was there heard it and said it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Let us pray. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and the pain of injustice in the world. Loving God, as we journey through this season of Lent, give us the strength and the courage to make the changes that are needed in our lives. Open our hearts and our minds to your steadfast presence and help us to put our trust in you. Amen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, beginning at the 13th verse. It was bef just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in this world, he loved them to the end. In the, the evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put things under his power and that he had, become, had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel about his waist, and after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that he had wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, you will not wash my feet. Jesus replied, Do you not realize now what I am doing? But later you will understand. No, Peter said, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, 
you will have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter repeated, replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that is why he said not everyone was clean. <clears throat> when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I am Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness of pain done to the earth and to its ecosystems. Let us pray. Loving God, as we journey through this season, may we be open to your presence. Give us the strength to make the changes that are needed in our lives and the courage to take on the work of transforming your world. Amen. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you Our next scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, beginning at the 13th verse, verses 13th chapter, verses 18 to 38. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared bread has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me and the one who sent me. After he said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciples whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one whom I will give a piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. And then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Jesus, Judas had charged had charge of the money. Some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give it something to the poor. But as soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. When he had gone, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. 
If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you but a little longer. You will look for me just as I have told the Jews. So I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Simon Peter asked, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lie down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. As we dis extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of violence in the world and to the earth. Let us pray. Draw us all together in your love, O God. May our restless hearts not resist you, but continue to search until they find their rest in you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dust and ashes, church of face, mark the failures and a falling Holy Spirit come. next reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 1 to 27. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus knew all that was going to happen to him. He went out and asked them, who do you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, 
Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked, Who do you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you, I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those that you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put away your sword. I shall, not, shall I not drink the cup that my father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers, with its commander and Jewish officials, arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Aeneas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside the door. The other disciple who was known to the high priest came back, spoke with the servant girl on duty and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter was also standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teachings. I have spoke openly to this world, Jesus replied. I have always taught in the synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus had said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. This is no way to speak to the high priest, he demanded. If I have said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I have spoken the truth, why did you strike me? Then Aeneas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was standing there, warming himself. So they asked him, are you not one of his disciples too? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Did I not see you with him in the garden? And again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the rooster crowed. As we extinguish this light, we are acknowledging the darkness and the pain caused by the lack of basic needs, lack of food, of shelter, of education, and of health care and love. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are with us, that we may call upon you no matter where we are or what we are feeling. Keep us mindful of your presence and trusting in your promise, that you are working with us in the moment-by-moment -moment unfolding of our lives. Amen. Forty days and forty nights You were fasting in the wild Forty days and forty nights Tempted and yet undefiled Sunbeams scorching all the day
Our next scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, 18th chapter, 28 to 19th chapter, verse 3. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus to Caiaphas, from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. Now it was early in the morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanliness, they did not enter the palace, because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed over him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourself and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to suffer. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? Your own people and chief priests have handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were so, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king, then, Pilate said. And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is the truth? Restorted, retorted Pilate. This, with this, he went out again to the Jews gathered and said, I find no basis of charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release you one prisoner at the time of Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted out, No, not him! Give us Babarus! Now Babarus had taken part in an uprising. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again, saying, Hail the king of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and the pain of war and oppression in the world. Let us pray. Loving God, we open our hearts to you. We invite you into our innermost being, only to find you already there. Strengthen us in our quiet place, and then lead us into the work of justice and peace. Amen. Shall not we, O trial, share, and from earthly joys abstain, fasting with unceasing prayer, strong with you to suffer pain. Keep, oh, keep a Savior dear, ever constant by our side, that with you we may appear at the eternal Easter. Our next scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, 4 to 16. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing you out. I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is your man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. 
As for me, I find no basis of charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law, and according to that, he must die because he is claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Do you, don't you realize that I have the power to either free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would not have the power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed over to you, me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of the Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out, sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement. It was the day of preparation of the Passover, and it was noon. Here is your king, he said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but the Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and the pain of illness and disease in the world. Let us pray. Loving God, there are so many choices before us every day. Choices offered by our friends, our family, our culture, our own past. Some of them encourage the well-being of the earth, others and our neighbors. Others are destructive. Help us to distinguish between them. May we learn from the choices of Jesus and embody compassion, justice, and inclusion in all that we say and do. Amen. Our next reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, 17 to 30. Carrying his own cross to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha, there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side of Jesus, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus, of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign for the, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. 
The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write, King of the Jews, but that, but that this man who claimed to be the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers crucified Jesus. They took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven from one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let us decide by lot who will get it. This happened so that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They divided my clothes amongst them and cast lot for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood Mary, stood his mother and his sister, Mary the wife of Clopius and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had been finished and so the scriptures would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked the sponge of it and put the sponge on a stalk, on a hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, he said to them, It is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and the pain of all the children in the world who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Let us pray. What we contemplate this night is beyond words, beyond understanding. May the Holy Spirit intercede for us and give that voice to what is inexpressible. Amen. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, sometimes it causes me to try. was the day of preparation and the next day was a special Sabbath because the Jewish leaders did not want bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down the soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other but when they came to Jesus they found that he was already dead and they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw this has given a testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you may also believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled not one of his bones will be broken. And as the other scripture says, they will look upon the, on the, upon the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came out and he took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who had earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped him with the spices and strips of linen. This was accordance to Jewish burial customs. 
At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in that garden was a new tomb, which no one had been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus' body there. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have willed that your Son should bear for us the pains of the cross, that you might remove them from the power of the adversary. Help us to remember and to give thanks for our Lord's passion, that we may obtain remission of our sins and redemption from the everlasting death through the same Lord and our Savior. Amen. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were 